In this video, we'll see how to use MBX1 to simulate an MMS server, including the Goose publishing service capability from IDS code. So first, we need to connect uh, the IDS code software installed PC to the control port of the MBX1, so which is already done from my side. So the testing PC having the connection to the control port one and as seen the IP address, which is in the similar range for my testing PC network adapter because I'm using the static IP address, but the device is also having inbuilt support for the DCP protocol and we can able to even set uh, the first option in case if you would like to assign the automatic IP address that are available in the network. So let me go back. So I'm using 192.168.2.15 2 as a static IP address for my MBX1 control port one. And next is I need to set an IP address for my station port, which I'm gonna use it for simulating an ID, also publishing Goose messages in the same network. So the IP address is very important for the MMS server, which we're gonna simulate because the Goose messages doesn't require an IP address to be simulated, but we need to choose uh, the access point correctly because the MBX1 having four different access point and we need to choose uh, the right access point um, which are connected to the, the network where we want to exactly simulate having the client devices, also the subscribers in the network. So I have 192.168.210.197 as an IP address because the other ID is also in the same IP address segment. And I'm gonna use it um, for the Goose messages for publishing, also for sniffing the network in the same adapter. And we can also be able to flexibly manage the different access point depending on the requirement. So let's say okay here. Then we can able to go to the simulator section or we can even able to select the simulate ID option and we can able to just export the ID which you want to simulate. So in that case, I will use uh, one of the ID from um, ABB from PCM600, which I have created as offline ID and this particular ID is not available in the network. And this particular ID is available in my network as real ID. And I can able to quickly show you by opening the application configuration and going online, I can able to just explain you that I'm already configured to subscribe the Goose messages from the ID, which is not available in the network now. So this is a Goose interlock receive function block at the real ID. I selected the function block and go online to show you this ID is not available in the network. So let me zoom in a little bit to show you more clear. So this is the ID um, which we are going to simulate now um, and we can able to see the validity of this particular function block and the right side down uh, it's zero that means um, it's not available in the network and I'm only subscribing to this one of the goose messages and we don't get uh, the communication validity for the the messages that are subscribed here so let me go offline and come back to id scout and i have already exported the sed file maybe i can quickly export the sed file from the substation section from the pcm 600 can able to choose the same file like can able to copy the path where i'm going to export let me replace the file and we can able to export the latest 
620 addition schema, which is uh, addition 2.1. The file has been exported, and we can able to see in the log, the down, and we come back to the option to import an SEL file. So this is the latest timestamp. Which we could able to see it here, and then we can able to just open the file so that the ID that we're gonna simulate even we can able to import all the ID and we can able to um, pick the ID that we're gonna simulate both options are completely fine for ID code so in this case the ID name is here available in the right side as a technical key so it's a Q02A2 So this is the ID that we're going to simulate. Let's pick this particular ID. And the ID content will be loaded to the simulator section of the ID scout. So here we could able to see the, the contents very well, which are configured in the PCM600 in this case, and the report control blocks. And we can able to even explore this more in detail by exp by enabling the description about the data model and the data sets for the different um, communications related to reports, course, and some value for the data sets. Then our point is here to simulate an ID. So we just need to start option here and we can able to see here there is an IP address which is available in the configured ID from the PCM 600 here and the IP address is 192.168.210.161 and this should be in the same range for the station port of the the MBX one and it should be different than the station um, port IP address also the control port IP address should be in a different range than the IP subnet of the IP addresses that we assign to the station ports. As long as the ID that we're going to simulate from ID code in the same range that we assign to the station ports, we are comfortable to simulate without any problem. So by default, we also enable the GOO simulation bit to make sure that doesn't cause any problem in your simulating an ID in a real environment. If it is test environment, we can able to uncheck it, which we can also able to do it very well here and later on. So let's start simulating. So I'm using 102 port as well for simulating an ID. So the ID has been simulated without any problem. We can able to see in in the information in the output window so the id started simulating simulating successfully without any problem and uh, in the 102 port let's go back to the to go subscribing function block in the real id and here we could able to see the the status now because we are simulating the goose messages with simulation flag enable the test bit enable from my discord and we should be able to see the the goose messages here as well So what we can able to see here, let's go to the ID scout and we will just select the goose control block, then select the configure goose option. There we can able to stop the goose messages and then uncheck the simulation and test flag. Then start publishing now. And we come back here and we could able to see now the communication validity is one. That means we have the real goose um, publisher from the simulated 
um, ID from the IDs code and the real ID is able to subscribe the messages. Now we could able to see the open status. So, so we'll go back to the IDs code and then let's try to close the circuit breaker position from this level and update. Come back to the real ID as a Goose subscriber. Here I could able to see the simulated ID position is updating correctly, which is uh, the position status here. So this is how we can able to simulate an ID from ID code using MBX1 and we can able to even control the, the Goose control block uh, parameters flexibly by stopping it and customizing it based on requirement if you want to perform some negative use cases during your testing activities. So we have simulated an ID from the testing PC and I have another um, PC connected to the network as a client. So let me take that particular PC in a remote desktop connection. Let me open the IDs code software application from this particular PC. And we'll try to establish the connection and try to associate the simulated ID. So I will discover the ID and the IP address is 161 that we have simulated. So let me discover the ID object. And here we could able to see, we could able to successfully discover the ID that we have simulated from the other PC. And here we are using ID code as a client application. So let me even enable the report control block to make sure the device is even able to so let me enable the reason for inclusion to make sure why the data has been sent to the client. Let me put this in off screen. Another one is in another off screen. So here we have the controllable logical node and we have the CSWI4. Let me just drag and drop the data object for the controllable logical node. And here also I will do the same thing. So from the, the left side, we have the client application as an ID code and we have even can enable the sniffer for the enable report. So let me stop the goose monitoring. We'll only focus on the, the report. Let me try to select the controllable uh, logical node and we could able to even see the the control model which is a select before operate with NN security. Let me select the control option on the left side and I will try to change the position from open to close. Select and operate and we can able to see in the right side. So simulated device also receiving the, the control command so which is a close status. Now and we can able to even see the simulated device able to send the, the report to the client device and what exactly we did. And we can able to see the trigger option why the data has been sent from the simulated device to the client. So basically the data change happen in the report control block. So we can able to see we have selected the position, the selected data attribute has been changed in the first instance of the, the report that has been sent from the server that we have simulated. And second thing is we basically change the position. And the third change was about uh, the select has been false. So these are the data change. Uh, that's why the report has been sent from the simulated server to the discovered client. 
and to make sure another case we are using um, mbx1 to simulate an id and there are some services that are running on my pc where i'm using id scout uh, with mbx1 occupied the, the 102 port with the different um, applications on my testing pc so that doesn't cause any problem to simulate an MMS server on 102 port. So to make sure, we'll open the task manager and to see how we can able to get to know that 102 port. So let's go to the performance and then we open the open resource monitor. So there we can able to see the different services. So everything getting loaded here. So in the down, we can able to see the listening port on the right side. So there is a service which is already occupied uh, the 102 port for the TCP protocol. And which is uh, the service from Siemens um, help services. Now we can even um, able to use um, MBX1 to simulate an MMS server on the 102 port on top of it with the MBX1. So the MBX1 uh, could able to um, all right because uh, the hardware is completely different and we could able to um, completely perform the simulation on 102 port having an mbx1 with us so that's all for now in case if you need more information or face any difficulties using mbx1 to simulate or to simulate in any different manufacturer ID, those are having the 60s MMS server support or the Goose publishing subscribing support. You can feel free to contact Omicron technical support that's available from the Omicron webpage. They are able to just go here and then select the support option. There we have a technical support based on the location you can able to pick the, the right regional support line from here and then you can able to write your request and we'll be happy to support you to fix your problems with the right solution thank you take care bye